Uh, our next speaker is uh, Marco Caligari, and he's from Italy, and he's going to address us about eye tracker communication devices in ALS, impact on disability and quality of life. Marco. Good morning uh, to all. I'm very glad to be here today. Before starting, I would like to thank the organizers, in particular Rod Harris, for the invitation. Well, today I talk about eye tracking communication devices in amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, the impact on disability and uh, quality of life. People with uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis show progressive loss of voluntary muscle strength, which cause respiratory swallowing and motor dysfunction. As the disease progresses, this disorder also causes severe phonetry impairments, which impact negatively on the quality of life. Most of PALS maintain cognitive abilities, normal eye movements and function until the advanced stages of the disease. These marginal skills allow PALS to communicate through specialized. Specialized uh, low tech, such as uh, each run panel, each run panel is a low tech and low cost uh, aid based on a transparent panel with letters or symbol, and uh, it's used uh, to communicate between patient and the caregiver. Caregiver verbalizes the letters indicated by the patient guide, guide's direction. Each tracker, ETCDs, are high tech and high cost equipment based on a PC with an infrared camera which utilize the user's AI movements and gaze direction in order to manage all computer function and allow communication. For many years, ETCDs have been utilized in order to recover communication in PALS. Until today, no studies show the effectiveness of ETCDs. The aim of our study was to evaluate the impact played by TCDs on communication disability and on quality of life in PALS in the last stages of the disease. PAL were, PALS were, uh, were recruited by a public call on the most popular Italian ILS forum attended by PALS, their own uh, through the TCDs. Inclusion criteria was habitual ATCD users with ILS diagnosis, severe motor and phonatory impairments, and sparing of eye movements only. We assess uh, in uh, the individually prioritized problem assessment, which is a questionnaire designed to evaluate changes produced by assistive technology device in patient disability and the psychosocial impact of assistive devices scale, PIATS, is a 26-item self-report questionnaire designed to assess the effect of an assistive device on functional independence, well-being, and quality of life. In addition, we administered a timed writing test. We asked patients to write with their disease the Italian expression from Dante, the Divine Comedy, Midway upon the journey of our life. Uh, we measured uh, the time and counted the number of misspellings. Demographic characteristics of 35 PALS who answered to our call are summarized in this, this table. 27 male and eight female, mean age about 51 years old, same representation of spinal and bulbar onset patient, and very low score of ILS functional rating scale. Despite uh, an intensive use of DTD, no major side effects uh, were reported by patients. In the figure, you can see by looking at the white column, echo, the white uh, column, the pulse initial level of communicative disability. The dashed column show the decrease of each disability when patient using Etran. Etran. Eastern, the black column show the level of communicative disabilities of PALS when they use the TCDs. As shown, the TCDs greatly reduce the communication disabilities in all items. 
In this figure, you can see the effect of uh, DCDs in activities such as call for help, surf the net, attend a forum, and manage emails, activity not allowed by each one. As shown, uh, DCDs greatly reduce disability also in these, item, in these items. Here, you can see the strong psychosocial impact brought by the DCDs, the use of the DCDs in all PIAT's subscale. There is a large increase in competence, adaptability, and self-esteem. The maximum value of the scale is plus three points, and these values are considered very, very large. Therefore, a DCD is really very important for the quality of life of our patient. Here you can see the mean typing speed allowed by ETCDs. And on the right on the figure, the number of misspellings that occurred during the test. You can see a significant difference between spinal and bulbar patient. Spinal patient write faster and make less typing error than the bulbar ones. Our findings show that ATCDs are effective in reducing communication disabilities, demonstrated by IP, and in improving quality of life in pulse in the la late stages of the disease. The positive effects were not associated with any specific placebo effect due to the supplying of any device per se. In fact, these effects were more evident when patients use, uh, use the DCD rather than another communication device such as the uterum panel. I take aids such as CDCD allow patients not only to communicate with relatives or friends, but also to surf uh, internet, manage email, use a social network, and, can, and call for help. In addition, EDCDs don't require constant presence on the caregiver, like uh, the different panel does. EDCD al allow good performance in terms of typing speed. That results to be only three to time, times lower than the speed that reach most of the user of the PC keyboard, not professional typist, of course, and three to, to four times faster than an aid based on a scanning interface controlled by the sensor, and even 10 to 20 fa times faster than a brain-computer interface communicator. Conclusion, EDCDs bring new communicative abilities, allow the social closeness and participation, improves pulse and the caregiver quality of life. ETCDs require good cognitive abilities and motivation, and normal eye movement and, movement and vision. Limits. ETCDs aren't universally known and prescribed, and are still very expensive, and this limits their use and diffusion. One take home message, ETCDs are effective. They improve quality of life and partly restore communication in advanced stages of the LS, not only with the caregiver of relatives, but also with people far from the patient, thanks to the internet facilities. One last thing before to finish, and I finish. As I said, the, the DCDs are very expensive, and not all patients can benefit from, for it, from it. So I would like to end my presentation with this quote that I find appropriate. There is uh, really progress only when the benefits of a new technology become for everyone. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Marco. Do we have any questions? There's one in the middle here. Hi, I'm Mary Beth Geis. I'm an R, uh, a nurse consultant for patients with ALS. Uh, can you hear me? 
We okay. Can, we can. What do patients use when they don't have the ability to use one of these uh, machines? Are there any suggestions on low-tech devices? This is one that I have that I use for my patients. It's low-tech because it doesn't require anything except holding a board up to communicate with patients. Is that what you use in your country as well? Having a patient blink to spell out the words? And then we've got a back uh, to the question of what sort of low technology devices. What, what use do you use? Low technology, so spinal uh, like transport, like a center, um, health care, health issues. In my country, in Italy, we use. Uh, uh, many low-tech uh, devices, uh, such as each one panel that I show. We use uh, the table like uh, your, uh, your table, uh, yes. And we compare uh, with, with the IPA questionnaire the, the effect of the communication disabilities bring uh, to low-tech uh, communication device and the high-tech device. So, in, uh, I counsel always to this patient to have, and the caregiver of course, to have an Elovotech uh, communication device always, even they have, have uh, an egg tech because uh, it's uh, very simple to use, or always ready, and uh, of course a useful device. I hope that answer right. And we had another hand go up at the front, but then he shook his head. No? Any other questions? One right at the back. Please speak slowly so I can understand as well. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, my name is Michelle Garrett. I'm from Chicago. I'm a hospice nurse. I was just curious as to what drives the cost of this technology? I understand that it's very sophisticated, but what is the major factor driving the cost? Why the technology is so expensive? Really? I don't know why it's so expensive. <laughs> okay. I can I think uh, a computer with an uh, infrared camera can cost uh, about uh, $1,000, $1, but uh, they're still very, very expensive. I, I don't know the, the, the reason. Uh, a commercial, commercial, uh, commercial right. Probably the simple reason is that uh, there's profit to be made and let's make as much as we can. And uh, uh, I know in, in Australia, the eye gaze machine is about 25,000 Australian dollars, which is about 25,000 US, uh, or about 18,000 euros. And um, there's not a lot of them around. But somehow or other, people have to recover the cost of their investment. Um, we all know pills are cheap, but the price of supplying really tech, for example, is very expensive as they recover their development costs. So, uh, unfortunately, until we get philanthropy driving technology development, I think uh, Marco and all those people who are working with technology are going to be faced with uh, significant expenses. One last question, anywhere? No? Well, please join with me in thanking Marco.